Yeah. Are those your questions? Yep, those are the questions. We can start. Is it recording? Yeah. It's been a recording the whole time. <laughs> Tell me about your background. Tell me about my background? I mean, you're not from this area, right? Right. Where are you from? Where, where I was born raised? in Philadelphia and I was raised in South Jersey. And it was an anonymous suburban hell where everyone stayed in their living rooms watching television all day. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, people didn't go out and do things and create things, you know. Mm -hmm. When did you know you wanted to do creative things? My mom was a painter. Oh, okay. So she was always painting and uh, my grandfather was a painter. You know, so I grew up around art. And so mm -hmm. I just drew as long as I can remember I've drawn. Yeah. It started out with professional wrestlers. I used to draw Hulk Hogan, Sergeant Slaughter, and all them a lot. Yeah. And uh, I never stopped. Oh. So what brought, what brought you to this area, to Williamsport? Um, Lycoming College. It's actually a funny story. Yeah, I started going to Lycoming. But we were just here to stay in a hotel room. Mm -hmm. um, in between visiting Bloomsburg University and Lock Haven University. We didn't even know Lycoming like, College existed. And uh, we were hungry, so we were driving down the road. And uh, the giant was closed. We found a giant. We're like, ah, food, but it was closed. And so we kept driving. Uh -huh. And uh, eventually we saw a school. And my dad was like, hey, we should check it out. And I'm like, oh, I'm really tired, you know, Dad. I don't want to go in. And he's like, ah. And then I fell in love with the campus. It's so gorgeous. Uh, then I went to grad school in Philly for and art. And um, I was staying down in Philadelphia, and um, then I, well, I fell in love with Liz at Lycoming in my last year. Oh, okay. So we still did long distance um, for three years, I guess, while I was in Philly, and she was in, first in Williamsport, going to Lycoming, and then in Bloomsburg. Um, and uh, so then she started going to nursing school at Penn College back here, and that's why we moved back, because of Penn College. So but after school you went back to Philly for a while? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And uh, yep, to go to grad school. Yeah. For painting. Which yeah. I, uh, I, I didn't really research graduate schools. I uh, had two options. I applied to UART, so my backup was more College of Art, which mm -hmm. is a girls' school. <laughs> so I, I hadn't done that much research, obviously, yeah. if my second option was a girls' school. Did they, uh, did they allow boys in at all? Or? No, no, no okay. it's all girls college. Yeah. <laughs> How did you first hear about the pajama factory? The funniest thing is we just moved right across the street from it not even knowing it was here. Like we just thought it was an abandoned factory and mm -hmm. we didn't know anybody. I mean, I knew people at the school, but that was it in terms of locals in Williamsport. We didn't know anybody. And uh, how did I get introduced to Mike Pilato? Somehow I met Mike Pilato. And mm -hmm. then he showed us around the factory, and then he found that I was going to grad school at UArts, and he's like, oh, you got to come to the factory. And he's the kind of guy who could take you around an abandoned factory with dead pigeons on the floor and be like, this is going to be amazing. And you're <laughs> like, yeah, right, Michael. Uh, but it was already starting at that point. They already had um, nine studios. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, so there were already artists in here. And yeah. then I was just, we wanted to be a part of it. <clears throat> yeah. Because, I mean, I... It felt like an extension of grad school. It was like, no way, here in Williamsport. Because I'd been in Williamsport. When you're like homing in Williamsport, you're like, man, this place sucks. You don't know anything <laughs> to do. You're not a local. So yeah. you just like walk up and down 4th Street. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? If you don't go, like go into the cell block, you got nothing to do. Yeah. Um, but then and it's here, a community of artists, like right here. Are, are you serious? In yeah. a way, to me, the Pajama Factory represents something else that can get people outside of their houses, you know, and back together again. Another third place besides work and home, you know, to bring people together. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what we need. You know, we need the people out on the streets at night. We need them making art. We need them going to see music. You know, we meet, need them together, uh, honing their energy and making something happen. It's changed you creatively yeah. to be here. Your direction your painting's taken or your work is taken. Well, it's, it's kept me working. I mean, I, I heard the stat, and it's one of these floating stats, you know, that I don't know what the actual study, you know, the legitimacy of the study where it came from. Mm -hmm. um, but they said something like 80% of people have their MFA stop making art, you know. And so being around people that are making art, like, I mean, when Casey first moved in here, he was in here all the time, and I was in here all the time. And the more he was in here, you know, it kept me here, and we were feeding off of each other's energy and working, you know, so... Yeah. Going forward, you're, you're, I assume you're staying. Yes, certainly. Um, what do you see? Uh, 
I, I want to orchestrate more things that bring people together, you know, or help other people that are already doing that. You know, like you started the soup on Sundays, you mm -hmm. know, the I want to support yeah. that. Yeah, the potluck. Um, to bring people here together just to talk, you know, that's yeah. like exchanging energies. That's what people do right when they're alive. Yeah. You know, the pajama factory is an opportunity for you to go have fun for yourself. You know, whether it's making art or doing whatever with people. Get it's just excited. a cool place to be. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, I definitely think it has created, it's created something definitely for First Friday because First Friday usually dies in winter. Mm. I mean, being outside is, you know, it starts to hurt to be outside here in January. Yeah. You know, but the factory gives people an opportunity still to get, come together and celebrate First Friday, even when it's cold. General. Well, now we have the ceramic studio, you know, that's public that people can come in and use. And Ralph with the dark room, he gives workshops. I mean, yeah, those are both that, part of the Center for Creativity, the, non mm -hmm. the nonprofit. I mean, yeah, to bring people in that aren't. Certainly going to bring something to uh, the community as a, as a, in a broader sense. Um, that uh, you, I'm guessing you're going to stay in the area. You just bought a house down the street. I love it here. I honestly love it here. And it, it feels like a really special place. I mean, people that grew up here a lot of times, you know, don't like it or want to get out. And I can understand, you know, because I, I hate where I, you know, everybody hates where they grew up. I was yeah. on the first bus out of here after high school. <laughs> right. I, yeah. but, but to me, where it seems like in a lot of other places, the art narrative is like burned out. You know, people compare themselves to like what's happening in New York City and they feel like, oh, they're not good enough or whatever. The scene, you know, gets jaded. But here it still feels like the energy's fresh and people are making things happen and the narrative is just beginning. And more people, more influx keeps coming. I mean, they have an artist in residence program here that is bringing artists from all over the country every summer. Yeah. Like, yeah. What do you think the factory will be like in five years? That's a good question. Um, well, we've kept one person from every artist in residence program. You know, it keeps growing. When people come here, mm -hmm. they love it. So as long as new artists come in with new energy and the place keeps growing and changing, then it's going to be even more beautiful. You know, it's really going to be a scene. I mean, it already is a scene. My yeah. friend Brian uh, came and said, man, there's so many artists here. It feels like Greenwich in the 60s. You know, I mean, and the more artists that come, the more it's going to be like that. Yeah. And it's also making a part of town uh, appealing that nobody wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I told people in the, at the paper where I live, they're like, you live there. <laughs> you know, like, do you know what happens there? You bought a house here. I know. Yeah. But I we mean, feel safe here. Nobody bothers us. We, I mean, we've we bought in this neighborhood if, if you... The factory wasn't here? Yeah. No. There's no way I would have bought a house here. I, I mean, that was part of the appeal that we could still be near the factory. I think part of what I love about Williamsport too is that, you know, it's small enough to where you can kind of know everybody, but it's big enough where things are happening. And it's just a very, it's a walking friendly town. Mm -hmm. Like I can walk all over this town and get to everywhere I want to go, get to everything I need. And you know, you always see people, you know, and there's like, I can walk to the Bullfrog, then walk to Wegmans, mm -hmm. then walk back home or walk to the library. You know, it's just, it's very walking. There's a playwright who said, uh, like he can't, I forget his name. He was uh, the playwright in residence for the uh, community theater. Like, but mm -hmm. he said, Williamsport seems to have the good elements of a city without the urban chaos. And when he used that phrase, it just clicked on me. And I'm like, oh my God, he's so right. 